Welcome back. Now, Dr. Isime has joined us this morning to discuss managing skin acne. Uh, Dr. Isime is uh, an aesthetic physician with uh, Laser Dam Clinic. She is certified by the American Academic or uh, Academy of Aesthetic Medicine and Plastic uh, Plastish Training. Uh, I'm going to find out what that means. And her core is managing skin acne, pigmentation disorders, scarring and aging skins and she's joining us this morning to talk about um, this issue of acne how to manage it and uh, for some people it's worse than others but maybe we should start from the beginning uh, could you describe what acne is and what the causes are okay so acne is um, an inflammation of the pilosebaceous glands so basically what that means is the hair follicle and then the glands around it in the mm. skin so usually um, it gets clogged up with sebum and then that pro um, provides a very good environment for bacteria to grow. Mm. So that's the basic of it. Mm. But there are a lot of factors that can um, make the acne be more pronounced in some and people that, than in that others. others. Yeah, I know typically um, when, when people hit uh, puberty, then you know they have acne on their faces yes. and all of that. But that's for some per for for certain pe persons when they then get older, it stops. But yes. for some others, it just never stops. Mm -hmm. uh, w what accounts for these uh, disparities in in different people? Okay, so there's a combination of various factors that are involved. There's um, genetics. There's the um, availability of the bacteria higher in some people than others. Mm -hmm. There's hormones as well, and there's something called steroid acne, where um, products that people use that contain high amounts of steroids can make the acne come out and even come out worse. Mm. So this can happen at various points. So you mentioned um, puberty. Usually that happens because there's, a, there's an, increase, a, an increase in the amount of hormones, and so it provides that environment for the acne to come out. Mm. But there are other factors as well. So if there's a combination of factors most of the time, then we see it um, worse in mm. some people. Yeah. But does climate also have a, have a role to play? I, I know that uh, there's people who have said that when the weather is really hot, um, the, the acne is worse and, and mm. things like that happen. Mm -hmm. But when it's colder, they then notice that there's less of that. Is, is that also bacterial action or what's happening there? So that's more of the environmental factor. So some people, when they change locations, move from one area, even within the country, from one area to another or outside the country, or they're coming from outside the country to Nigeria, mm. we see things like that happen. So it's just a factor of the environment. And for some people, there may be some um, things that they're exposed to, for some maybe the water or something that changes the pH and the normal balance of the skin mm. that also allows the acne to be more pronounced, to yeah. come out more. Now, now Doc, w w one of the, I've also seen, um, I mean, growing up, school and even after school, I've seen some people with like serious acne conditions, like, yeah. which is not normal at all. So mm -hmm. you see the normal ones that come and go, yeah. and then you see for some people it's really bad. Yeah. What accounts for those kinds of situations? Those are kind of extreme uh, cases. Okay, so it still boils down to those factors. Ideally, the best thing to do really would be to come in to see um, a doctor so that we can go through everything, assess it. In such severe cases, we may need to do um, more tests or something like that, but generally acne is clinically diagnosed, meaning you come into the clinic, you say doctor, and then doctor takes a look at your skin and knows that, oh, this is acne, mm. and then they know how to manage it. Mm. But um, if it's severe and it's protracted, meaning it's been on for a long period of time, then we would maybe want to look into doing um, hormonal studies or just doing some more investigations mm. and then stepping up the treatment options that we have to okay. offer. So now, um, Doc, we, we've talked about, you, you, where you talked about seeing a doctor now, which is where we're going. Um, one of the things that I know I've always uh, also seen online and different mm -hmm. locations is that, okay, you can manage acne. Uh, you can also prevent it in some cases uh, and all of that. So can you just take us through some of, this, uh, some of the steps that people can uh, take in at least managing it at home mm -hmm. and ensuring that uh, it doesn't, you don't, they don't have like extreme cases and, and things like that or recurrent um, issues okay. with acne. 
So generally with acne, um, it boils down also to good skincare practices because a lot of the time people have acne and then they feel like they need to do things that are a bit extreme. And generally that tends to put in a lot of acidic things on their faces mm. and that can dry out their skin, but it ends up bringing out more acne because if skin is too dry, it can break out. If it's too oily, it can break out as mm. well. So it comes to using a good um, face wash. So a balancing um, wash is best but I mean if they need to come in it's it will be better so we know what um, type to mm. give but if you're just at home just a regular good um, face wash without any harsh ingredients mm. would be fine yeah because speaking of harsh ingredients there was, um, there was a time when I was younger I think just as I was getting into university I had mm -hmm. lots of pimples and all sorts of strange things mm -hmm. on my face and my mother gave me this thing this bottle of whatever it was it had lots of alcohol it smelled like alcohol mm -hmm. it was blue in color okay and i used it for like two weeks and then it looked like my face was breaking up like it was really really dry mm. so i didn't understand so instead of solving the problem it looked it like it made, it made the problem worse, worse. yes so mm. what are you saying there that people should be careful what products they use yes they should um, a lot of um, things that happen in terms of people that come to the clinic that I see these days, they have been exposed to um, harsh products really mm. and this has made their skin worse. So I think it's all in the bit to maybe circumvent the medical intervention but it's really important um, to come in to see a doctor just to have that assessment and to be sure that you are on the right track. Mm. So a lot of products that um, that people use on their skin can be quite harsh mm. and we need to know that there are ways to use these things if we have to introduce these things mm. and then if if we don't have to how to manage the skin so it boils down to using the right um, products um, doing proper treatments as well mm. on on the skin okay so you talked about face wash mm -hmm. um a lot of people can't afford face wash so if if I, i'm just a regular person and I take my bath normally and you do the things that I'm supposed mm -hmm. to do. Are there any homemade remedies or just things that I can do just to manage the situation without having to um, do any extra expense in the area of buying extra products like face washes and mm -hmm. scrubs and things like that? Yeah, so even, well, to be honest, there, there, at, there, there should be um, face washes available at different price points. And that's even just the beginning. To mm -hmm. treat the acne itself, we tend to move towards things like retinoids and benzoyl peroxide. Mm. And knowing how to combine these things too is in the purview of the doctor. So mm. I really wouldn't say to do home remedies just because of people that I've seen that yeah. end up with the side effects. And I, I'm not sure it's the best to... Because <laughs> I've, seen, I've <laughs> seen some home remedies. I, I remember uh, way back again, many years ago, where they would say put lime on your face. Yes, and, and things then like that, and it just... Some end. chalk and some yeah. strange things. There was something called and Shirley it, that people used to use back in the 80s. <laughs> really terrible. <laughs> yeah, so I, I know that there, there, yeah. are, there are many things that, that people have tried okay. over the years mm -hmm. uh, as um, pimple remedies. So basically you're saying avoid things like that, avoid go to the like hospital. Avoid things like that, go to the hospital, go to a skin clinic. So it would be very, it would be better. So you know you're in safe hands as mm. you go along with your treatment. Um, plan it's, mm. it's usually best. Wow, well, this is this is really good. I I, I like the way this, the, this conversation is going. Uh, people should avoid using harsh, harsh products, products on their faces. Mm -hmm. um, try and manage your skin by keeping it clean and washing it yeah. and, and all of that. Sunscreen um, too is quite important. A lot of people think black people don't need sunscreen, but it's really okay. Sunscreen and things sunscreen. like that. That's extra expense now, doc. <laughs> but anyway, but I understand what you're saying, yeah. and uh, thank you for coming and talking thank to us today. Hopefully. You. Uh, someone who has learned a thing or two out uh, there uh, today. Now we have a performance for you, a second performance of Abimbola Olaniji, also known as Bimri.